fam. What happened last night? Let's talk about your girl. Okay, so uh, just an update. First of all, let's start with uh, Georgia. Georgia had disastrous elections. Pull up uh, machines not working, long lines, the same bullshit that we heard throughout this primary season and all the way, of course, back in 2016. Uh, so we we let's just take a look at some of the issues that that were happening in uh, in Georgia. Yeah. This is primary day in Georgia. Lines in Atlanta stretching for blocks. Some standing in the rain, forced to wait hours to cast a ballot. You've been here about three hours. I'm not leaving. You're not leaving. So I'm done. <laughs> Why are you so intent upon staying here? Um, it's important. It's important for me. It's important for my, my son. So we're going on that four hour mark. Georgia unveiling new voting machines statewide right in the midst of a pandemic. Several of the machines were broken. It seemed like maybe half of the machines were down. It was a disappointment. This is something that should have been checked yesterday. The biggest problems in Metro Atlanta, specifically areas with higher black populations. The city's mayor asking, is this happening across the county or just on the south end, pointing to a predominantly black area. LeBron James tweeting, they say go out and vote. What about asking if how we vote is also structurally racist? Georgia's Secretary of State, who oversees the election, is blaming local officials, saying poll workers were not properly trained. The employees didn't understand the system. So what were they doing for all these months? All of a sudden they wake up and they say, let's have an election on Tuesday. One county official firing back at the Secretary of State, saying if there was a failure of leadership, it starts where the buck should stop at the top. Now Georgia's Secretary of State has launched an investigation ahead of November's election. No peace. Taking over Ma'am. Boulevard. Okay, so as you guys heard, the same old issues that have plagued us for, yeah, for the longest time. This. Um, I mean, it's just this, the same bullshit. And then we just have another Twitter clip uh, that shows a little bit more of that. Guys, I'm terrified. I ran for office. I worked for President Obama in the White House. This is wrong. This is America. Please, God, help us. I mean it. Listen, this is a crisis in our world to make us not exercise our right to vote. Let me ask you something. I tweeted all the major networks. So everybody tweet the networks. Everybody, oh, okay. please. The radio stations, everybody. Tweet everybody, please everybody. We cannot tolerate this. I love you. I love you. Thank you. I love civil disobedience. Let's work together. I love you. I'm, a, I'm just sick. I have to go home to take medicine. But I love you. Thank you. Keep the eyes. I'm terrified. Right. I so people are obviously outraged um, because... This keeps happening, right? And I think the Democratic Party thinks that people aren't paying attention because it's COVID, because it's it's protests. But now people are, are paying attention because they're protesting. And they a lot of people are starting to talk about, well, you know, a lot of young people, especially our vote doesn't count. People that I mean, we, we wait in hours. We, people were waiting for hours. And the whole the, the, the Democrats come back with a retort. Oh, OK, well, I hope we can fix it by November. Yeah, because yeah. that's all they care about, because they don't care about this primary. Why? Because they've already selected Joe Biden as the candidate. They've already decided he was going to be. They decided that a long time ago, that it wasn't going to be Bernie Sanders. You're yeah. dismissing everybody's right to vote right now. Even if if Joe Biden has clinched the nomination, people have the right to vote for whoever they want. And the fact is, a lot of people don't like Joe Biden and they want to make sure people hear that. OK. And also this the spin to just make it like it's about race only it's a political divide too as well because yes you know and i think the democrats are trying to spin this as look look what they're doing in georgia they're suppressing the black vote whatnot yeah but we saw in la they suppressed the latino vote yep. and the young hipster vote they made those lines long knowing that everybody all these young kids were going to go out with this populist message of progressive progressivism and going to go vote so it's they want to suppress the vote you know, well, yeah. all across the board. Yeah. It, the, 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 the black vote in Georgia is primarily Democratic. You know what I'm saying? It's more progressive. But it's also political, we see as well. You know what I'm saying? So it just, it, it's the Democrats are going to try to twist this and of say, course. look what the Republicans are doing to you. Vote for us. We're going to fix it. And they're never going to fix it. No. So they're the wolves in cheap clothing. Here's, where that, here's where that argument dies, though. This is the primary. So obviously, the, the, the fight isn't 
Democrat versus Republican. This is a primary. This is people like voting for the, the Democratic candidate or the Republican candidate. So there's your argument there. Your argument dies because the primaries are about choosing the right candidate to run in the general. So they can't even use that argument because this is that's not where the battle is. That's in the that's in the general November. And so they always even here, they're like, well, I hope we can fix it by November. No, bullshit. Like you were supposed to have it fixed a long fucking time ago. And I want people to be more like this lady, to be outraged, to be pissed off, because at the very least, that'll draw attention to what's happening because nobody, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, hey, what, why, why is this happening right now during a primary? Like, is it going to be magically fixed in time to vote against Donald Trump? Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. So yeah, that was fire what she did. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. We need it to look, see it looks like she went to uh, the outside the line with her car and she just yeah. started publicly speaking. This is what we need to do more of. Yep. More and more people Especially need to go election. out and have public town halls. Yeah. She did say she worked for Obama. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what she Yeah, was, but I think she, she meant like, that. I worked for Obama This or I worked, I campaigned for Obama, blah, blah, blah. I think she was just saying like, I've been um, here before. This yeah. is not normal. Okay. I don't think she was saying like, praise Obama. Just no, because she, she mentioned praising. Obama's name doesn't mean she's praising him. Exactly. Gotcha, gotcha. So, um so uh Paula Jean won in West Virginia. Uh she's a progressive. She supports Medicare for All, Green New Deal. She was also in the last what the AOC documentary. Mm -hmm. with um Amy Valala. with Amy Viella. Uh and um you know, she's she's kind of got some controversial issues that she she had a channel where she was talking about pedo pedo gate. Um and that's very real by the way for hmm. people who want to mock that. That's really real there's a lot more to that um but she she's very heavily focused on the the issues when it comes to medicare for all and things like that now west virginia we all know that for me it's one of it, it, it's definitely one of the most poorest states factually but for me it's it shows just a lot of people that have been forgotten the the you know the coal miners the the factory workers you go through west virginia and it's just like solemn we've seen many movies be made out of the fact that they, you know, they get diseases from their water. The politicians don't give a crap about them. They are honestly like, uh, it's like a third world country in West Virginia. It's really, really bad. And nobody gives a damn because it's a bunch of, uh, you know, for, for they referenced them. It was just a bunch of, quote, hillbillies there. Hmm. And it's it's been completely unfair. And the more I've seen about West Virginia, the more I've been angry as to how they've been treated and dismissed. Similarly to Flint, Michigan and, and other cities like that in America. That shouldn't exist. Now, Paula Jean won and beat out Richard Ojeda, who was the other Democrat. And she's running against a, a Republican female in uh, a Republican woman in, in the general. She has a really good chance to win here. It's ironic to me that in times of crisis, West Virginia might be the one to actually have a progressive. I mean, um, it, it's just ironic to me. But yeah. uh, you you have your opinion on Richard Ojeda. You feel like he's better on foreign policy. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, this is kind of like that whole, you know, divide that I see, fam, that I still think we need to work on. When I saw Paula Jean on, um, uh, what's his name, the Humanist Report, Dave uh, Figueredo, Michael Federego show, that's kind of had that same kind of language of like, okay, these are the things that are uber important to you. Richard O'Hare has been a little flip floppy when it comes to his rhetoric or, you know, his discussions about Medicare for all, where Paula Jean is going to fight no matter for what. For Medicare for all, because it's the most important issues. And, you know, uh, Green New Deal, Richard O'Headers has kind of uh, reached an arm out to some of the people who are the coal miners. He doesn't know necessarily if they're going to transition into clean jobs yet. So he still, you know, maybe has this kind of rhetoric where he would continue to have coal miners with their jobs. So therefore, he's ostracized from that kind of community. The fact that he's talked to Joe Manchin when it comes to like, you know, civil liberties issues and trying to push him to get away from the Patriot Act. And I say this right now, when it comes to foreign policy, Richard O'Hara is far superior than Paula Jean Swerdgen. Now, what I'm trying to say, fam, is that it's not wrong to pick Paula Jean over, uh, excuse me, it's not uh, necessarily, you could pick Paula Jean over Richard O'Hara. But I see the same type of language going on when people go, well, why are you running, supporting for Tulsi Gabbard over Bernie Sanders? Bernie was here first, and we should be supporting him. It's like, but you're misunderstanding the issues that these group of people have that you're not allowing to come in sometimes where I think we need to be building bridges rather than just ostracizing the person and saying whose turn, turn it is. And that is that foreign policy a aspect, that civil okay. liberties aspect, whatnot, that it's just the issues that why we're st we, those people, I think, stood behind Tulsi Gabbard 
as opposed to Bernie Sanders. And understanding those issues, because I've been at a, a Bernie group where I've been ostracized for supporting Tulsi Gabbard because they've looked at some of the things that Tulsi Gabbard's done. And I'm saying, you're not listening to me. It's my issues that you're not bringing to the table, that you're not accepting. But do you think, do you really think people are supporting Richard Ojeda for foreign policy? Because I don't, I don't buy that. I think Richard Ojeda comes off as a more centrist type of Democrat. And See, we say it, more centrist, but we're not. He's far superior on foreign policy than Paula Jean Swergen, by far. He understands imperialism. He understands regime change war. So I don't, when we say he's more of a centrist, just because he's, he, he has that, I mean, I wouldn't consider Tulsi Gabbard to be more of a centrist, but yet she was considered to be more close to the Republicans. I would consider her not to be as, as far left, though, as, say, Bernie Sanders on, on some issues. On foreign policy, though, she, she was stronger and civil in some liberties. ways. Yeah, she was more entirely vocal, absolutely, 100%. But here's the thing. When I'm looking at West Virginia, I'm looking at a, a, at a state that is so poor that I just don't buy that people there are looking at foreign policy as, as their main concern. People there don't even, I mean, Pasa, it is literally a fourth world country in West Virginia. It is, it is absolutely abysmal. They don't have anything. Nobody gives a damn about their lives. And they've been treated as such. So if I'm a West Virginian, I'm not really going to care about foreign policy because i can't even put food on the table there's a lot of bases there there's a lot of yeah but there's a lot of bases there's a lot of servicemen there in west virginia too as well richard ohio being one of them you know what i'm saying and a lot of people it does whether we believe it or not now i understand it's not as important as some of the other issues and all i'm saying is what i would have liked to have seen from paula jean swergen no matter what and i understand there's bad blood between her and ohio because why he ran and whatnot but i think there should be a recognition from people like apology jean Engine, or for people who are more of that Bernie Sanders, Medicare for all, you know, gung ho beret people to say, okay, what are the issues that are important to you? What do we have to bring into the table to bring bring us together? Because just because we have this small, different, nuanced, nuanced, you know, mentality about our civil liberties and foreign policy and those things, those need to be brought to the table. Because once again, I think without without those issues in place, we can't get to a Green New Deal. We can't get to Medicare for all. And I don't see that sometimes. I still see a lot of Bernie people who are still like anti-Tulsi to the anti-Tulsi people with saying, OK, well, why do these people feel this certain way? It was the issues. It wasn't Tulsi. But you can get those things like Medicare for all and Green New Deal without without paying attention to foreign policy. We saw it with FDR. We saw it with FDR. The problem is we without don't civil make, liberties in check. We don't want to make the same mistake again. Without our civil liberties in check. You think we can get there? We then have why before. Then, we we have it with Medicare for all. Uh, well, We've never won Medicare, Medicare for all. For you know all why? Was... Because we have a, a, a large a population deal. of people in the United States uh -huh. who feel that, oh, a government takeover of Medicare will be evil. And why? Because they've been able to control the narrative. They've been able to control the conversation. They've been able to suppress those voices. For me, information is the most important, valuable commodity out there right now. And he who controls it controls the people. So therefore, I don't believe it ever can get done unless we get those civil liberties straight, unless we have true freedom of speech. And we didn't have that issue back then with FDR. Now we have a different beast. Mm -hmm. We have a different game. And if we don't get that straight, you know what I'm saying? Sure. I agree. So, I'm just saying it's not as present in the mind of, of people in West Virginia who are living in dire poverty that is hard to imagine exists in the United States. So, I mean, I, I, I think if you're going to come up, if you're going to talk about foreign policy, you have to make it relatable to those people there uh, in that way. And, and Richard Ojeda has been too touch, too comfortable with the establishment. And, and West Virginia, for instance, in 2016, went for Bernie during the primary and the general went straight Republican. And you have to think as to why, because the, the, the Republicans weren't the ones that destroyed the, that state. They, they weren't the ones that, um, didn't care about the factories being shut down. They that left them in poverty. They have a huge opioid crisis, a huge drug problem. N like the Democrats were supposed to go after them, and they never did. So yeah. I th I think Paula Jean is actually grabbing from a lot of Republicans. I just think I just think that the the forefront of her is, is more domestic policy than foreign policy. See, and for yeah. a, a state like Virginia, I. I honestly see it very difficult to really make foreign policy the, the, to campaign it's on not, that. It's not you, but also the decriminalization of uh, drugs. Richard O'Hale has been big on that, too, as well. He's got that libertarian mindset of sorts. And, and here's the thing. I think neither one of them are tight and too pushy or close to the establishment whatsoever. That's where I see the opportunity for them to come together, because I don't see any of them. Now, I do see... Richard trying to get chummy with, with Mnuchin, uh, that mansion, mansion, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
uh, is a little bit too much blue no matter who. Yeah. Um, because he believes that the, the the Republicans are awful and he believes that, you know, they're just straight neocons and he hates Donald Trump. Uh, but I thought there may be an opportunity for these people to kind of join. But that's forces. why, though, yeah. if he if he's so focused on hating Donald Trump, that's going to off put a lot of, of Republicans that are like, well, yeah, Trump. But look what the Democrats have done. So I think that's why she won. So James uh, Jameson Doan is putting me in the my place. He says pasta is 100 percent wrong. I'll hate on foreign policy. He voted for Manchin. Uh, he doesn't mean what he says. Paula is 100 percent anti-imperialism and doesn't flip flop on everything like Ojeda. You can't trust him. So Jameson is obviously for uh, Paula Jean yeah, Swerdin. Yeah, what specifically and, foreign yeah. policy wise? Have... Uh, just his, you know, his, his rhetoric about how we get involved with wars and what we do to our veterans as they come home. And once again, this is a long time ago. And there's a lot of people who are saying uh, that he has flip flop on a lot of things. Remember yeah. Ojeda? I, I paid attention to Ojeda a lot when he jumped into the presidential race and stuff like that. And he was always looking at the oligarchs and saying we should eat the rich and that they were going out to fight their wars. And these wars are not. But what is he doing legislatively that he wasn't in office to, you know, well, he was in the state uh, Senate for a long time ago. whatnot, And, you know, so a lot of people like Paula Jean on this. And, you know, like I said, uh, I'm willing to look more and see more. But um, I would like to see a bridge of those people come over and stand behind Paula Jean for her to win and and sew this up. And I, I don't see I see a lot of the cancel culture sometimes. And I've seen that with Paula Jean sometimes, but in the past, like she really went after Ojeda because Ojeda said he believed in uh, due process when it came to Kavanaugh. And I thought Paula Jean was very hard on Ojeda for that subject, what not. Not to say that Ojeda should have had a better position, but, you know, it wasn't like he well, was just pushing a, forth Kavanaugh. Well, yeah, he was just but, saying, I believe in due process. Yeah, but that's also a reflective response of people who don't want to, like, who don't, who didn't buy her story. So that's also coming from a place of, that's a reactionary response that a lot of people on the right were saying, yeah. using. So for, for it was probably, you know. Well, as we see, their goose is cooked of their attitudes towards Biden right yeah. now. So, I mean, it's, yeah. it, I mean, a lot of people yeah. called it for what it was with politics. And it was, I mean, I think so. it's still, you know, a lot of people may have their differences with Paul, but I think it's still a victory in the sense of if a per, if somebody like her gets in there, she is one of those people like Bernie that is bringing, I think, in some of the Republicans that have suffered under the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is largely hated in West Virginia uh, for a reason. But the progressives are able to make um, an, uh, a door there. They're able to go in there. So I think we're going to be... Yeah. It's going to be an interesting race. I think she can win it if I agree. If, if, she, if she gets the support rallied behind her, we'll have to wait to see how that happens. Yeah, yeah. And uh, somebody said the Cheng promotion of oh, it is all that you need to know. Yeah. Tony watches closely and stuff. And let me tell you something. I'm pretty sure that there's a whole we've been involved in California politics before. Uh, we understand the whole ins and outs. There's a lot of shit going on. It's like a uh, a weekly TV show of, of, of drama and this person said this and that. So I'm sure there's a lot more to it. Uh, I didn't play Extra, I didn't put it under a microscope, the race between Swearingen and Ojeda. So I'm sure there's a lot of things I can get educated on. However, I'm just kind of, uh, you know, talking about my position right now, like I talked about, because uh, we had some arguments the other day with some uh, activists out here, and they still don't understand imperialism. They don't understand, you know, our foreign policy. I think Johnny was even almost compelled to want to say something on a, on a yeah. megaphone about yeah. foreign policy and how important it is. And there are civil liberties. They have no idea right. how damaging the Patriot Act is and what it is. They don't even understand what Snowden did. And that is dangerous because we have to understand that as well. It is a nuanced situation. Right. But I'm just feeling that that door is still not opened up. Well, by it has to come from to a place in. of like understanding where they're coming from, too. I always go back to that because if you're just going to go and educate people on something like, you know, more than they do, it's not going to be receptive. I just feel like we're big picture thinkers. You are especially. We think on an international level and a national level. We just interviewed a guy that's more of a, a community organizer thinking on the on the micro level. So there there is that just because people don't think on that macro level doesn't mean that you you can't talk to them about it or, or get them to make those connections. Human nature is to look immediately at what your your first uh what your first needs are hunger yeah. shelter it's like but y- that's why it's so hard to get people to pay attention to Assange to get people to pay attention to regime change wars because they're all they're like wait a minute that's all over here I'm over here I, I need to pay my rent I need to get this so there has to be a way to bridge that and it, it, it just it, ha- it, it you want to bridge the libertarians with that but the libertarians then have to care about like the, they can't dismiss it as they're communist. Oh, they're socialist. No, I hear you. And, and, and we have to move those, those particular type of modern-day libertarians even further when it comes to that. I like to tell them how money's 
make pretend. But, you know, like the Green New Deal. We talk about a Green New Deal. Well, one of the, the dirtiest ways that we pollute this planet and its ozone layer is through war. It's missiles blowing up, whatnot. So that's why I thought eventually we would get to there and say, hey, man, you care about a Green New Deal? Let's stop dropping bombs. Let's stop yeah. dropping bombs and stuff like that because that's what's really killing the ozone layer. And let's talk about how these bombs get there. Let's talk about the ways they do get here. So I hear you, fam. And once again, like when it comes to Paula Jean Swearingen and Richard Ojeda, uh, I'm sure there's a lot more nuanced situations that happen. It's just that I, I still feel the fact that a lot of people don't understand why I supported Tulsi Gabbard over Bernie Sanders and stuff. It wasn't the person. It was the issues and to find the way how we get there. And I'm still searching for that way how we get in there because like you said people are going to be concerned about rent and food and yeah. stuff so they can't see past that because that's survival mode and most of the people on this right. planet right now are in survival mode right so. especially in this country yeah. too 